All right. This will be our last uh, Friday teaching tool of the calendar year. I'm excited for winter break. I'm sure you all are also excited for winter break and for this year to be over. Um, today, I want to share three websites that have articles for that are student friendly. These are all great for both finding ideas for your classroom. So if you're looking for a phenomenon or a real world application for some of the concepts you're teaching. And they're also, of course, just great to have articles that you can use to um, teach your students some reading strategies or if you're working on some scientific literacy, the, these are great resources for that. So our first one is Science Journal for Kids and Teens, and the, the address is sciencejournalforkids.org, and I'll link all of these in the video comments so you can just click on them. Um, but on this website, we have there are peer-reviewed articles that have been rewritten for a student audience. And so there's all different ways that you can search and some different filters they have built in when you find one that you want to use. Um, when you open it up, it will have the abstract and then a lot of different resources, and they all come with not exactly the same resources. So um, this one has the article and a teacher's key, so they all have some questions at the end of the article. And then some of them come in different languages. Most of them are just in English. Um, and then some of them link to the original paper or even back to the original data set. This one looks like it also has a full 5e lesson plan that goes with it and some other resources and a video. So when you open the article, you'll see that it is set up with the same sections that we would find in a regular peer reviewed journal article. And so this is, again, a great thing to use if you're working on scientific literacy with your students or if you're working on data analysis and you even just want to focus on the data analysis piece. Um, this is a great resource. So that is Science Journal for Kids. The second one that I wanted to share is called Frontiers for Young Minds. And uh, the address for this one is kids.frontiersin. Org. And um, this one is similar in that it also use peer, it uses peer-reviewed articles. The difference is that the scientists who wrote the original peer-reviewed article then work with a panel of students to revise it and write it in a student-friendly way. And so some of them come with some like additional back around content information that maybe you wouldn't normally find in a journal article. Um, so they worked with students to try to make um, everything about the article accessible to students. And so it's kind of the same thing. You can search for um, topics. So like this one you can see was reviewed by a 10 year old and a 16 year old. So that's who the scientists got feedback from when they were creating this. Um, but they also have uh, usually figures and images and data from the original research. Um, so this is another place that you can go to get ideas for your classroom, some like real world application ideas, and then also to get um, some reading materials as you're looking as you're working on that with your students. And the last website I want to share is Science News for Students. And the address is sciencenewsforstudents.org. And this one is different in that it is more like a regular newspaper article. So it, it isn't um, like a replication at a kid-friendly level of a peer-reviewed article. It's more like a newspaper article that talks about research that has been done. They also have articles called explainers where they just explain a concept. Um, and those can be really useful to kind of reinforce as students are figuring out um, concepts or you're asking them to learn something so that they can apply it. Um, and one thing that I actually really like about this is because they are news articles, a lot of them um, align well with some of the like engineering and techie standards that we have that are uh, a little bit harder sometimes because we haven't been used to teaching those in the past. So I'm just going to do a quick search for radiation um, to get the, so, um, so one example is in high school physics, the fourth strand on waves has a few standards that are, look a little different than probably the way we've taught physics before. So we have, you know, standard on digital and analog waves. Um, we have this one about the effects of electromagnetic radiation on biological materials, which is probably not, I don't know if that's something that 
has generally been taught in um, physics before. But so the um, the NGSS standard that correlates with this is HSPS. Four, four. So um, on Science News for Students, I can actually search by um, NGSS standard. So if I actually look for, if I just search for this standard, um, I'll come up with a bunch of articles. So some standards have more articles than others, but you'll see, you know, I have all of these articles where if this is something that I don't know that much about myself as a teacher, I can go to learn about. I could also um, use these articles with students or use them to start getting some ideas of how I would teach this or what I would teach with this. Um, so you can see this particular one, there's two or three pages worth of articles that align to the standard. So I hope that these three websites are useful. I hope you can find um, ideas for your classroom and resources of um, nice high quality science information that you can use with your students um, as they're learning to read uh, and analyze data and um, all of that. So I hope that you all have a great winter break and I will see you in January.